So welcome to another Fuel Fridays. I uh, apologize for not having one for the last few weeks. Um, going back to work and everything and we're uh, we're getting ready to do a big move so it's kind of put all my little projects on the back burner for projects related to the move. Um, not sure if I showed it yet. I do have my 24 volt pump installed with a T back here. Now yeah it is up against the tank but I plan to have this is a pretty sharp angle. I think I mentioned in another video. I'm gonna just cut these bands and get another piece of fuel hose. I think this is from yeah second quarter of 86 so it's a little old and I mean that's only a couple feet so it shouldn't be too much. I'll replace it and then I can slide this pump back to this point. I still need to take these uprights off and do a different thing for a cover. Keep the sun off. Otherwise it's pretty much plumbed. Um, like I said this way I can tee into here with an elbow or I can put an elbow in here and pump fuel from off the trailer or swap hoses and defuel the uh, tank into a bigger pump or into my bigger tank back there or uh you know whatever a bigger engine or whatnot oh look baby geese that, that's the other baby from when i first started this whole thing right there almost full-size goose and then that's the second goose so i forget which one's which one's goose willis and the other one's goose wayne i think that's goose wayne and that's goose willis <laughs> so yeah, I had a an almost, we had a large limb out of this pecan tree fall, and as you can see, it, it was tickling the trailer. It made the trailer jump. It scared it. So, um, I've got to finish cutting that, but the goats love running up and down it, so... Um, now I'm just worried about the rest of the tree coming down. Although th that branch wasn't really, it wasn't attacked very well. But pecan trees are known for being kind of weak. So uh, I do have all the gaskets. I got new gaskets made. Um, they're all garlock, which is a hard permeated material. And uh, hopefully it'll work. Um, I still need to lop these off and I still need to blast the tank now I'm gonna use glass bead that's uh, I can reuse it over and over and it should work for the outside as well as the inside on the aluminum without scoring it up too much of course I'll take the hose all off and I'll take anything that can be damaged off but everything will be bolted down uh, prior to that so what I was gonna show today really is the filter water separator that I have and it has these clamps that go around the edge of the top clamp and there's a, a rubber gasket that goes on there and then these clamps bolt on that holds the lid down so and it's a big heavy it's all aluminum but it's a big heavy disc there okay so you take that disc off and the roof the roof that I put on here is, that's why I put the filter where I did. See, the roof can be here and you can still access this. So you have this wing nut here and you have four filters to go down in here. And they provide, they provide the filtration for the fuel. And they also uh, help separate out any water that gets in there. So you just take that off like that and then pull one out well that's just the strainer see how it's just a fine mesh strainer to keep any kind of bugs or dinosaur pieces you know whatever might be in your fuel and here's your big sock filter or cartridge filter um, I got super lucky uh, this is off, I think I said in the previous video, called a beta system. It's a self-contained fueling system for military trucks. They put basically two 600-gallon tanks, very similar to that. There's, there's one back there. 
if you can see it, it's owned by a friend. Man, the zoom on this thing is slow. Anyway, so what you do is you put two of those beta system tanks together. They actually have pins and connections at the bottom. You put both of those in the back of a deuce and a half or a five ton. And then the, the outfit had a big hose reel on each side, which is where I got all this uh, inch and a half hose. And then one of these filter, filter housing and a bigger electric pump. Uh, that pump will do 50 gallons a minute. I think this one's only 35 or so, which is more than enough. I mean, 35 gallons a minute, I'd fill my pickup in one minute. So it's, you know, it's going to be, that's going to be plenty until I do get the um, diesel engine rebuilt and the black mirror uh, pump rebuilt. Because I still want to put that on here because then I don't need any electricity or anything. I can fire it up and run it anywhere. Uh, I'll put a little... I'll put a little connection off of the gauge port here. Yeah, I've got a bunch of junk piled on here to keep the animals from messing with it. But I'll put a T on here with a little a little spigot pipe with a valve. So as I'm filling something else, I can just have that spigot and top off the tank of this. Just open the valve until it's topped off. So it can basically fuel itself. When I was in the Navy, we were in Argentina and uh, we got truckloads of fuel five that we got we got almost 400,000 gallons in 5,000 gallon truckloads it took forever three or four days of these things just coming down and i swear the diesel pump ran it burned more fuel than it was moving but anyway uh it that's all it had it had a little piece of pipe coming out of the discharge and just going right right there into the fuel tank and every once in a while the guy would crack it open so anyway back to the sorry i got a little adhd so you can see there's probably some sludge down in there uh, i was filtering a deuce mix which was um motor oil and pretty much anything else that was flammable gasoline kerosene jet fuel you know whatever i could get my hands on that was free so i got i got lucky a few years ago and i got tons of brand spanking new cartridges in the boxes so I have I got probably 30 of them so like I said look luckily this same filter housing was used in the deuce and a half fuel truck so um, they're not hard to get I, I in fact I have actually found them brand new online I forget what the price is but I got them way cheaper than that so the way this thing works is you have your four four mesh screens and then you have your inner fuel filter and your fuel flows in from the bottom inlet and there's actually a floor in here with the holes are in in the filter so the fuel flows through the filter out the strainer and then up fills this whole area up and then overflows down into there and that's your discharge out to the, wherever it goes so your floor so i forgot to describe what this gauge is for it's a pressure differential gauge and what it does is it measures the pressure differential between the incoming fuel and the outgoing fuel with the filter in between and the purpose of that is to show you when the filters need to be changed. Floors in here, because that's where obviously that's where you direct your fuel up your filters. But also, any water, free water that gets in here is going to drop to the bottom. Now these filters also have a water separating feature. So, but the very bottom is is where all your junk, trash, and stuff accumulates the heavy any heavy stuff and then your upper floor is also where water accumulates because this blocks it and I, I said in another video there's a little ball in there that floats on water and there's a line right here maybe hard to see and that's all filthy because of the motor oil mix I was running through it it's just a chunk of plexi so I should be able to take that off and clean it up and then here's where you drain your water out of your upper floor your bottom floor there's a plug on the bottom 
So um, I'm gonna plumb all the drains together to one point. They'll all have different valves, but they're all gonna run together because uh, it's so hard to see. I got everything piled up, but I got a drain. Let's see if you can see it in the dark. I got that drain valve there that comes off of this line, the main line that goes to the back. And then I've got to run a drain off your uh, meter strainer. And that's going to go down. All that's going to plumb together and come out over here. So I can either I can either mount a waste tank on the side or just put a five gallon bucket under there if I need to open anything and drain it into it. And then depending on how nasty it is, mostly it's just so I can, I mean, yeah, there's going to be water and junk coming out of that. So I may just plumb those two together. Yeah. I'll just plumb those two together. See, everything changes on the fly. You got to think about things. Sometimes talking out loud really helps. I'll plumb those two together to come out down here. So that'll be oily, junky, nasty. So that can go in a five gallon bucket to either be burned or disposed of. And then those two, which will mostly be clean fuel that only needs to be drained if I'm doing maintenance on the lines for whatever reason, that, that I'll plumb out to the side and I can put an elbow down with a plug in it and keep mud daubers out. So that's where we're at with that. Um, I still need, to, still need to punch and drill these holes for this. I still need to punch and drill the holes for the hose reel. Uh, other than that, it is pretty much plumbed up. Um, I need to put another o-ring in here and bolt that up. But again, other than that, and the hose. Okay, the hose and blasting inside the tank. Yes, yes. Um, other than all of that, it's it's getting close, which is good because fuel prices are starting to go back up. And uh, I'd love to have this thing filled before uh, before we move to our new place. And uh, there you go. And before prices shoot back up. So put the P on there. I'm not going to change the filters now. Before I start using it, I will. Um, I'll start with fresh filters, even though those didn't look that bad. I've got them. Might as well. But I mean, I probably can put three or four thousand gallons through those filters before they really need to be changed. All right. Heavy solid lid here. And it has an air, it has an air vent. So when you uh, when you first start filling this thing, you can drain all the let all the air out before because it has to reach this top and go over. So saves you from pumping air through your whole system. And uh, so that's it on the filter water separator. Um, it's good for 75 psi. Uh, I'm sure it says how many gallons per minute, but I can't read it anymore. It's all Can you read it? Actually, I think I can read it better through the camera 50 gallons per minute Which makes sense because the big pump that came off of this system was 50 gallons per minute. So Anyway, that's where we're at um, I'll try to at least get that stuff bolted down uh, I'm going to do a different video on my sandblaster, my, the method I'm going to do for that, because I've got a lot. That's aluminum. That's not aluminum, but I'd like to blast and paint it. I've got a lot of stuff that uh, I wouldn't mind painting around here, so having a sandblaster would be really handy. So anyway, uh, that's all for now, because the choppers are coming. I guess they found me. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.